Good Tuesday morning, everyone. It is 1130 Mountain Time in Colorado. Hoping my microphone is high enough. Yes. And uh, I am Monica Corrado, certified GAPS practitioner, holistic nutritionist, teaching chef, and the GAPS chef. I'm here to answer your questions. Hello, Mara. I'm here to answer your questions today about anything you've got about GAPS, uh, GAPS cooking, the GAPS diet, etc. But as I promised Alejandra last time, I don't know if she's with us yet, I promised her I would talk about baths. So today I'm going to start with some teaching about um, the five detox baths that Dr. Natasha has in the blue book. Now, there are only four detox baths in the yellow book, uh, but there are five in the blue book. So one time, one more time with feeling. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not going to talk about healing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's my little disclaimer. I am uh, thrilled to have all of you here, and I welcome you, and I welcome your questions, and I really um, support your... Uh, hope to support your healing process with your um, children, your family, etc. And I hope that GAPS really is very, very good for you and your family. All right. So um, if you are interested, I am still taking people in my Love Your Liver class. We've only had one session because we had, um, we were, I was, I had to postpone yesterday's session, technical difficulties right up to the bell. Sad, sad. I was set up and everything. And so, um, in any case, if you'd like to jump on Love Your Liver, let me know. Send me a PM with your email. I'll send you the group rate, which is 10% uh, off the regular rate, etc. Okay, and if anyone's new to our group and you're here for the first time, welcome, welcome. I like to start by teaching a little bit the, on a subject that people are asking uh, about, and then take your questions. And I will do my best to answer them to the best of my ability. As uh, many of you know, I'm on Dr. Natasha's teaching team, and I teach with her uh, certified GAPS practitioners and certified GAPS coaches. And for anyone who's wanting to join one of those programs, we are starting the certified GAPS practitioner training this month, March, and the coach program in April. We'll do those programs one more time at the end of the year. So you can look for those at gapstraining.com. Gapstraining.com. All the information about certified GAPS coaches, certified GAPS practitioners. Um, also want to let you know that there are two new incredible classes being offered that are self-paced. One is a GAPS baby. I think that's correct. GAPS baby. Um, and there's also, I think there's one on um, picky eaters, but I'm not sure. In any case, go to gapstraining.com. You'll find it all. All right, here we are. Hello, hello. We've got people saying hello. Hello, Angela. I am well. Thank you so much. Hello, Niska from Man Montana. Yay, you're just one state uh, over, up and over from me. Um, hello, Vicky. Hello, Vicky. Hello, Megan. Hello, hello. Hello, Joanna. Nice to have you with us, etc. everyone. So nice to have everyone with us. Okay, so let's get started. I want to talk about baths because, as you know, I am doing, hello, Barbara. Hello, Jane. Okay, I'm going to get started. Hello, Lena. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hello from Florida. We've got Florida. We've got Montana. We've got Julio joining us too. Hello, Anna from Maryland. Hello, Teresa. You may be... Hello, Teresa. Hello, Dawn from Colorado. Excellent. We've got Maryland. We've got Florida. We've got Montana. We've got all sorts of... Colorado. We've got all sorts of people here. And uh, welcome to everyone. Hello, Kathy. Okay, great, California, I love it. Okay, let's get started. So, daily 
Uh, let's talk about detoxification baths. Very important. So what I see as a CGP is that many people will dive into, pardon that pun, yes, Washington, D.C., they will dive into gaps and they will be so focused on the food, which is wonderful and perfect and great. And you're learning about sourcing and cooking and, and meat stock and ferments and die off and all these things. And many people forget or, or don't realize, which is fine. They don't realize that there is a track that runs. You've got the food here, which is what you're eating and not eating on gaps, that's your one track. Then you've got another track that comes right alongside. We've got two tracks going on here. That track is the detoxification support for the body, mind, spirit, for the body. But certainly you'll feel better if you feel better, right? That was brilliant. So, okay, so we've got the food coming this way. We've got the detox. It has to run right alongside of the food because your body is going to be detoxing. The minute you start taking out the foods that feed pathogens, all of the sugars and the starches and the carbs and the processed foods and the other CRAP, pardon that language, um, you're going to have die off. And so you're going to need to, or Dr. Natasha really highly suggests, and it's right there for you in both books, detoxification that goes right along what you're eating and you're not eating. One of the easiest things to do if you have a bathtub, because what I'm finding is a lot of people only have showers these days. So if you can't do these baths in a bathtub, do them in your neighbor's bathtub. Do them in your parents' bathtub. Get a foot bath. Get a little thing. You can do it as a foot bath. Do something, okay? Hello, Caroline. We're going to start with detoxification baths. That's what I'm doing now. Okay, so detox baths. There are five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Five of them. Um, it is best to use, if you're going to do a detox bath uh, for your feet, try not to use plastic because plastic, when heated, will leach chemicals into the water and into your feet and into your detox bath, which may become toxic. So get a stainless steel one if you can. Um, that's really best. You can use a pot. Quite frankly, you can dedicate it to foot baths. Get a big stock pot. Use it for your foot baths. Uh, that would be great. I'm trying to think of anything else that might work well. In any case, so detox baths. There are five of them. You can find this information yourself in the yellow book. You can see mine and how this is what yours should look like. Okay, falling apart. This yellow book, page 309, you can find them there. You can find them in the blue book. Again, look at that. Hope everybody's studying. Blue book, page three, pages 354 and three. Uh, 353, 353, and 354. Those are places you can just grab your book and find them when we're off the call or find them now, whatever, as a reference uh, for you. All right, here's the deal. There are five detoxification baths. Dr. Natasha suggests that everyone on the GAPS diet, especially in the beginning, that's my, she, she just says do it, I'm saying, especially in the beginning, uh, that you take a detoxification bath every night. Or you put your child in a detoxification bath every night. They are called daily detox. That means every day or every evening before bed. They will really help your child or you relax because they're warm. People love warm water. They get you sleepy. They'll help you relax. It's a lovely ritual for children. The bath, the quiet, the story, the bed. Okay, so they're daily, number one. Number two, she really suggests that you start with just a tablespoon of something in your bath, a tablespoon, and then work your way up to a cup. 
Okay, so you start with a tablespoon and work your way up to a cup. Why would we do this? Because as always, we want to support the body, but not do anything too strong, right? You don't want to go from zero to a cup in one bath because people do experience detoxification. That's what they are, detox baths. A detox reaction, which can be dizziness, it can be nausea, it can be headache, it can feel really bad. So start your child or yourself on just a little bit of one of these five, which I'm going to go into in a moment. Okay, so start with one tablespoon. You can also start with cooler water instead of, I didn't say cool water, just not really, really hot water. Why? Because heat opens the pores. So a little bit cooler than, you know, very, very hot. A little bit cooler will, again, modulate, help control um, how fast you de detoxify. So the first thing is how concentrated these baths are. Start with a little and move up. I will always say that people who have been with me for the last, I don't know how long we've been doing this, since July of last year, I think, right? You know, I'm always like slow and steady. Start with a little and build your way up. Start with a little of something, watch the effect on the body, and then move up. Or start with a little bit too much, make it little, more little, less, not more little, less, right? So watch the body. We are observers on the GAPS diet. We're observing what does the body need? What is it telling me? Things like dizziness, headache, nausea, and just overall feeling bad when you get out of that bath means you detoxed too quickly. So back it off, back off the amount, the concentration of whatever's in that bath and or cool down the water just a bit so it's not really, really hot, right? So those are two things you can do to modulate the detox reaction to, or the, or the, the quickness, if you will, the intensity the rapidity of this detox response from the baths, the five baths, which I haven't even told you about yet. So one concentration of whatever you're putting in, start with a tablespoon, build your way up to a cup. And you're the only one who's going to know how fast you can build. No problem. Listen to your body. If one tablespoon is a joke and you're like, yeah, whatever, then maybe you want to go to, maybe you'll jump to a quarter cup. Maybe that'll be a perfect place for you to be for a while. Or maybe it'll be like, yipes, went too fast. So just listening, listening, listen, and then adjust. Listen, adjust to what the body needs. Okay, the third way that you can modulate, meaning temper, slow down, or speed up the uh, intensity of these detoxification baths is to look at time. Right, so one concentration of what's going in, what, what's the, how much you're putting in the bath, right? Two, right, what's the temperature of your water? And three is, um, three is how much time are you in there? So maybe in the beginning, you, if you have someone that's really sick, you're going to start with or really have a lot of symptoms or is struggling with detox, you know, they just, or they're struggling with die off. They're having a hard time. Maybe just a few minutes, five minutes is good. Maybe three minutes is good, right? And so time is the other thing that you can increase or modulate or temper, you know, turn the dial up, turn the dial back, turn the dial up, turn, right? So how much time are you in there? So shorter time, less detox, no problem. Longer time, longer time to detox. So you can work your way up to 30 minutes or, as, or even longer, um, but don't start there. Or, I mean, start there if you want to, but I'm always trying to keep people from having a bad experience on GAPS and then saying, oh, GAPS was so hard, I felt so awful, it was terrible, I stopped. Mm. Usually that happens because people of course, everyone's doing their best, but usually that happens because people are trying to go too fast on something. They're either bringing in too, meat stock too fast 
or they're bringing in kefir kathir too quickly and they're just, you know, they're just die the die off is too much for people to deal with. Or they're not supporting their blood sugar when they go off the standard American diet of carbs, 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 right? They're not supporting their blood sugar with the blood sugar stabilizer of butter and honey or coconut oil and honey or ghee and honey, right? So people have a bad time. Usually, usually my experience with the GAPS diet over the last, I don't know, 10 years or so working with people is that uh, they're usually just trying to go too fast. They don't even know they could go slower. They don't even know that they could. And they're having a hard time with die off and they just feel miserable and they just want to go off. So in any case, these are the three ways that you can modulate your ba baths. You've got it. I've said it multiple times. One is how much you put in the bath. You can go start with a little and work your way up to a cup per, per tub, right? Go ahead and start with cooler water instead of that really, really hot stuff, which would really open your pores, which would really increase detoxification. And the third one is watch the time. Just start with just a few minutes and listen to yourself. And I really suggest that people have a nice, uh, make sure you've got water that's mineralized, good mineral water next to the bath. So when you get out, you can have water, right? That will help for sure. All right, so let's get into the five baths. Number one, they all have different things. I'm going to go through them. I'm going to tell you what they are, and then I'll go through and tell you uh, which way, what to use for what. Now, you can just use them. You can, or you, you can just use them. You can rotate. Dr. Tasha does, does suggest rotating. Um, or you can just love your Epsom salt. But each one of these baths, uh, in addition to detoxification, they have their own gifts, if you will. Now, Dr. Natasha does not go into this in the book, in the blue or the yellow book at, at all, from what I can tell. But these are things that I have gleaned from her teaching, uh, teaching practitioners, um, and also just working with people and looking into what is it that I'm sitting in here and what does it do? So number one. Baking soda, also known as bicarbonate of soda. Baking soda bath. No, this is in no specific order, just what I wrote down. One, baking soda. Two, Epsom salts. Everybody knows Epsom salts? Uh, I think most people do. Number three, seaweed bath. Seaweed in the bath. Number four, um, sea salt bath. That could be dead sea salts or just good quality sea salt. In the bath, four. Number five, vinegar bath. We all say apple cider vinegar. That's perfect and wonderful. So those are your five baths, okay, folks? They all do different things. Now, the first thing I'm going to suggest to all of you from the beginning is this. Do not, did I say that? Did you hear me? Do not put essential oils in the bath with these things. Why? Why? because you're gonna mess everything up. I know that's too strong. We love essential oils. I love them, especially therapeutic grade essential oils. I use them myself, I use them with my family, I use them with my clients, etc., etc. They can be very, very useful, but, but we really wanna go for the detoxification that's happening with these things, number one. And number two, you do not ever want to put essential oils into really hot water because it can burn your skin. Perhaps not lavender or Roman chamomile, but anything else is a really bad idea because as we know, they're oils. They'll float on top of the water and then they'll burn your skin. So let's not do any essential oils in the baths. Let's just let the detox baths do what they're going to do, okay? If you would like to have a lavender bath, again, it's really better to... Um, do that separately. Okay, so here we go. Baking soda. What is ba what is bicarbonate of soda? Baking soda is alkalizing. It is alkaline. Bicarbonate of soda will alkalize the bathtub. So, what's that going to do? It can be very helpful for eczema or fungus of any kind on the body. So if you say to me, I have really bad athlete's foot or my child or my husband or whatever has foot fungus. B 
baking soda bath. Wonderful. Some skin conditions will really benefit from an alkaline bath. Why do I say that? Because the skin is naturally acidic. The skin is has a pH that is acidic, usually running around 4.7, 4.8. That's acid. Okay? Sometimes, sometimes, again, I'm saying sometimes because the vast majority of microbes cannot live in an, on or in an acidic medium. Okay? So the ones that are on your skin, let's just hit them with some baking soda and see if baking soda resolves. All right? So I like to say if you have a fungal thing going on your skin, baking soda, bicarbonate of soda, baths are really good for you whether they're foot baths or bath baths. Okay, number two, Epsom salts. We all know that Epsom salts are magnesium. They're magnesium. That's what they are, magnesium sulfate. Hopefully, please use food grade for, what, for whatever you're going to be bathing in, okay? We want food grade. Okay, so what does magnesium do? Everybody's taking magnesium, why? Relax, relax relax. So not only does Epsom, do Epsom salts detoxify, but they also relax. So if you have a child, a family member, yourself, who's like a total stress bag, and who isn't these days with everything going on all over the world, stress levels are very, very high for everyone. It's in the air. It's really difficult. Taking an Epsom salt bath in the evening can really help relax the body. Okay? Relax. You've got anybody who has muscle spasms, anyone who's highly anxious, Epsom salt. Go there. And for detoxification. So remember, all of them are detox baths. But feel it out for yourself or for your child or for whoever you're working with. Yeah? What do they need? Do they need Epsom salts? Do they need baking soda? Maybe they need one one night and one the other night. Please do not combine them. Okay? Okay. Seaweed. Seaweed. Ah, seaweed. The first thing that anyone should think of is, how am I going to keep my tub clean? That's kind of a joke. But seaweed, you can get seaweed, food-grade seaweed. Stick it in a muslin bag or a... Um, what do we call those? Cheesecloth bag. They're like the, they're the, um, they are the uh, cloth tea bags. Put some seaweed in there and you can steep it in your tub. Seaweed, iodine, right? Why do people eat seaweed? Iodine, thyroid, iodine. Iodine is incredibly antiseptic. Iodine is very antiseptic and Many of us are really, really deficient in iodine, unless you live by the shore and you eat seafood a lot. So iodine baths are great for both detoxing and iodine. Fabulous thing to do. Seaweed also has calcium, a little bit, potassium, zinc. So. It's a wonderful thing. Seaweed baths are not only good for iodine, but they're also very good. They tend to be really good for people with skin issues again. So psoriasis, eczema, um, acne, seaweed bath. Okay. Dead sea salts or other sea salts are just very high in minerals, right? Yeah. The salt is also going to play with the pH of the water which can be really, really good for you. Natural salt, another detoxification bath, which gives you minerals. How wonderful. And the last one is vinegar. So one more time, folks, if baking soda or bicarbonate of soda is alkalizing, vinegar is going to be acidifying. And isn't that a wonderful thing? We love to take apple cider vinegar internally. Yeah, well, it's also very good for the skin. Why? Because again, your skin runs at an acidic pH and this can help to normalize your skin's pH, which can help 
bring the skin flora back online and assist in detoxification. Okay, so those are very, very quick. The five detox baths, they're different. I like to say with my clients to try what you need. See which one feels better to you. One night, one might feel better. The other night, the other one will feel better. Or use them in a targeted way for specific things in terms of your skin. All right, that's probably enough on detox baths because I see a lot of questions coming in and I will certainly answer them. However, I have one last thing to say, my dear folks that are listening, and it is this. And I think you all know this, but let me say it because it's really important. Please, please do not put yourself or your child in chlorinated or fluoridated or any other chemical-laden water. You must, I, I really, I beseech you, I ask you, please, you can be feeding your child or you beautiful sauerkraut, cultured dairy, kefir, gorgeous foods, wonderful, incredibly probiotic-rich foods. We love that. You're giving them meat stock. You're giving them fats. Guess what? If they are drinking chlorinated water or water that's straight out of the tap, or you're putting them in a bathtub of chlorinated water that has not been filtered, a large majority of what you're doing will be for naught. This is really important, really important. Buy a bath ball, filter the bathtub water, please. Because if you're doing all this by day, good foods, probiotic foods, good fats, meat stock, egg yolks, la, 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 la. And then, so you're building, 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 and then you put them in the bathtub. Now you've killed everything on their skin. Remember, there's microbes everywhere on your skin, in your mouth, in your eyeballs, in your ears, under your nails, certainly all over your skin, under your armpits, yeah, in your groin, between your toes. We need the flora on the skin to normalize, right? Don't keep killing it or it's, I, I'm sorry, I'm sounding really strong, but I, I think of all of you spending all this time and all this money and all this time and all this money and all this effort, blood, sweat, and tears, right? Trying to do this gaps thing and then we don't filter our water. So please filter the water that they're drinking Filter the water that you're bathing in, fill, or you're bathing them in, or you in. Filter, filter, filter. All right, so start there, and then, because gosh golly, you don't want to have chlorinated water that's hot, and then you put, your ba put you or your child in there. Sure, you've now opened up all the pores, and you say, hey, chlorine and fluorine and flora, whatever the heck is in there, all those horrible chemicals to purify the water, uh, go straight into your straight into you, straight into those open pores. And then you say, oh, gaps doesn't work. And you say, I'm spending so much money and so much time. Yeah, but every single time you're like, Kh. right? We're killing everything when we drink bad water that's got chemicals in it. We are killing everything. Every time we take a bath or a shower in water that's not filtered, it's really critical, folks. I, I cannot stress it enough. Okay, enough of that. Here we go. Hello to everyone who has, has joined us. Okay, Annika, hello. Maria, hello. Caroline, we said hello to you. And let's see, Lena uses a Rubbermaid box. Okay, so let's use something uh, stainless steel instead. Megan, hello. Megan, hello. Angelica, hello. Uh, Lena again. Yes, find a stainless container. I'm telling you. Go and get yourself, you know, you can use a great big uh, stock pot. Go to the thrift store, find a stainless steel stock pot, not an aluminum one, and see, or how about something ceramic? Wonderful. Either way. Hello, Brianna. Dawn wants to know, do you recommend stainless steel with an ionic foot soak? Hmm, interesting. My understanding, Dawn, is that ionic foot baths, which I love, uh, are not really hot. I mean, they're warm and that the ions will be doing what they need to do in terms of detoxification. Probably sounds weird, but yeah, mm, 
I haven't done any research on that. I would feel it out. Dawn, see what you feel. You know, think about it. I know most of the practitioners that have ionic fo foot baths do it in a Rubbermaid plastic thing. Why? Because it's easy to carry. It's not heavy. It works. It's easy to clean. La, la, la. I don't know if it, I don't know. Maybe the ionic foot bath, uh, maybe the ions are pulling out all the toxins from the plastic bin too, perhaps. Okay. Hello, Alejandra. This one was for you. Okay. Hello, Nicole Marie. I don't know why you're saying hi, Mom. All right, Maria. Okay, da, 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 da. Yes. Barbara also uses a Rubbermaid bin for her ionic foot pass. Hello, Carol. Good to have you. Hi, Dawn. Hello. Good to have you, Dawn. Hope you're feeling better. Hello, Siranon. Happy to have you. Wow, there's a lot. Okay. Dawn says, see what she says about pink. Pink or gray. All right, let me go back up here and see what's happening. I'm trying to answer all the bath ones first. Someone's asking about gray. I'm assuming it's salt. Let's see. Okay, I'm looking fast. Don't want to keep you waiting. Okay. Raw milk on the counter. Okay. La, 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 la. Okay, um, we'll get to that in one moment. Okay, Nicole Marie. Hello, Nicole. What brand of seaweed is the best? Also, is it okay to mix ACV and Epsom salts? So I would not mix anything, folks. One more time with feeling. Either do ACV or do Epsom salt. Let them work their magic. They both have different gifts to bring, which I mentioned. Um, so I would do ACV or Epsom salt. In terms of best seaweed, I would just get something that says organic right? Organic seaweed or wild harvested seaweed, something that does, has not been exposed to radiation. If we do remember that the sea, as in the ocean, does not have any walls. So what happened in Fukushima does not, you know, moves all around the ocean. So go for something organic. They can tell you it doesn't have any radiation in it. Good idea. Okay. What about betonite clay? So there are no betonite, hello, Julia, there are no betonite clay baths that are um, in either of the books or any of Dr. Natasha's books, to my knowledge. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, my understanding is that we work with betonite clay internally for some people, just like we work with activated charcoal internally for some people as an adsorbent, meaning that pulls it out and sends it out of you, right? Pulls the toxins out. Carol says, thank you for talking about this on the detox baths. You're welcome. I have wanted to look this up and understand it better. Such great information. You are welcome. Good to have you, Carol. Okay, Megan says, what are the best bath balls with respect to brand? Okay, so I don't know that off the top of my head, folks. Thinking aqua something but that doesn't help you. Let me look some up and throw them on the page for you. <clears throat> I'll make a note. I knew that was gonna come up. Um, bath balls, you really wanna make sure um, that uh, they've got some kind of study for you, that they tell you that they take out this, that, or the other thing, because if they don't, who knows what you're wasting money on, right? So we wanna make sure, pardon me, <clears throat> we want to make sure that they're actually um, uh, shower filters and bath balls that really are doing something before you spend your money. So I'll, I'll put some up and you all, please share what you know on the page always. Okay. Carol says, what about multiple kids in a detox bath? I have heard conflicting things. It is absolutely fine to put multiple kids, multiple children in a detox bath. Don't worry. Uh, if little Harry is detoxing, his toxins are not going to go into little Jimmy. So you don't have to worry about that. Multiple kids in a detox bath is fine. Go ahead and save yourself some time. Let them have some fun. And make sure you're using one of the detox bath, um, one thing at a time. That's all. It's just fine. Okay. <clears throat> Kathy wants to know, which bath would be best for dry skin? Seaweed. Yes. Seaweed seaweed very good for dry skin 
That's the best. You got it right on the schnozzle. Good job, Kathy. Yes, seaweed. And then when you come out, how about some good food grade oil like tallow or tallow mixed with olive oil, right? Or um, I hesitate to say coconut oil on the skin, folks. Yes, you can absolutely use coconut oil on the skin. It's full of lauric acid, which is wonderful and antimicrobial. However, if you don't live in the tropics, it's going to be hard for your body to absorb because you're not used to those things. So if you're going to use coconut oil, mix it with something like tallow. Tallow is the closest to our own fat. So good idea to use homemade tallow for the beautiful dry, your beautiful skin so it's no longer dry. Okay. Yes, I know you're asking due to, I hope I answered that, Dawn, about the plastic. Caroline says, filter for the faucet or could you please, ex okay, it's not a bath bomb, it's a bath ball and it is a filter for the faucet. Yes, it's a ball that actually, they send you a little thing to put around the faucet so it hangs underneath the faucet. It's called a bath ball and it's a filter for the faucet. Yes, Caroline. Okay, Anna asks, hello, Anna. Do seaweed baths still help when I already do iodine pain? Absolutely. Absolutely. Your body will take what it needs and it won't take what it doesn't need. Wonderful. We love that. Body smart. Very smart. Yes, they will help. Teresa asks, does betonite, hello, Teresa, does betonite clay help get chlorine out of the bath water? I don't know that answer, but let's find out, shall we? And I'll get back to you. You can all look it up too. There is something that my dear friend and colleague, Becky Plotner, Dr. Becky Plotner of Nourishing Plot has written. She's talked about it. I did not retain it in my mind about what two things you could put in the bath to get chlorine out. So let's look up Becky's article too about what she wrote about taking out chlorine. I'm making a note on my little pad over here. Thank you for that, good question. Okay, thank you, Lee. Hello, Lee, Lee's doing some work for us. Radiant Life has this one. Yes, I bet you that's the one, crystal ball bath dechlorinated. Thank you for that. Are bath balls filters? Yes, well, bath balls that I'm talking about are filters. Yes, they filter out chlorine, hopefully, and all the other bad things that are in municipal water that will kill our beautiful microbiome that we have worked so hard, right, to grow. All right, let's see what else is coming in here. Okay, Vicki, is, is that what Becky says? Vitamin C capsules and betonite clay? If you have that information, can you throw it up here on this loop if you can? How much vitamin C? Is it real vitamin C or is it just ascorbic acid? Because we know Ascorbic acid is not vitamin C. Everybody knows that, I hope. Okay. Hello, Crystal. Crystal says, I'm assuming that's exactly right. No trips to the chlorine pools. Where do we want to be bathing? Where do we want to be swimming with the children? The ocean, lakes, streams. No chlorine. Bad idea. Really good, good, good call there. Good question, Crystal. Thank you. All right. Yep, Dawn has one here. La, 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 la. Vita bath, vitamin C bath, effervescent vit vitamin dechlorination. I love it. I'll look that up too. Thank you, Dawn. Can you post to the group? My phone is on. I'm not letting me copy it. Yes, we will post all these good links to the group. Dawn, can you throw that on the group page when you get a chance? Dawn, yes. Mineral hot springs. Absolutely. That's what we're trying to replicate with all these detox baths. That's what we're trying to replicate, right? Mineral baths are fabulous for the skin. They're fabulous. They're wonderful for detoxification. So if you can do some of these, it would be really good for you. Yes. Huh. Would adding kefir neutralize the chlorine? It's going to kill the kefir, poor little, poor little microbes. Sorry. Um, the fat has been great on my skin. I don't know if it will. I don't know that it would. But you could put kefir directly on your skin um, before you take a bath or after you take a bath, for sure. I love people that put kefir 
straight on their skin. Barbara's talking about clean water revival products for water filtration. Let's make sure though, folks, in all of these filtration, there's no magnets in there, right? And there's not alkalizing. We're not alkalizing. We are not alkalizing the water. We're just taking out, I don't know what's going on. I don't know your, I can't go to your link right now, Barbara, but for everyone, we just want to remove the harmful chemicals. That's what we want to do. And quite frankly, if Adriana were on right now, she would tell you all to jump onto drtomcowan.com, Dr. D-R, Tom, C-O-W-A-N, dot com, Cowan, dot com. He has beautiful filters that actually restructure the water. They have gemstones in them, and uh, they're really, I'm just telling you, take the bad stuff out. But if you can do the next step, which is put beautiful things in, restructure the water, uh, boy, all of us drink that restructure here's my structuring bottle here it is yeah dr tom cowan there's his little thing it's probably backwards for you structured water start drinking structured water make your meat stock with structured water yeah it's really important if you don't know anything about structured water folks you can read on tom cowan's blog he has a lot about structured water he has it on his youtube cow uh channel you could read his book, Cancer and the New Biology of Water. You could read Gerald Pollack's book on, on the fourth phase of water. The fourth phase, P-H-A-S-E, of water. Gerald Pollack, P-O-L-L-A-C-K. Everybody should be looking into structured water at this point. Structured water is water that is the same as water that comes down uh, the mountain, meaning um, water that's spring water and water that's come down from the mountains has a structure to it. So it's very, it's alive. It's not alive like a monster, but sorry. But um, it's alive, meaning uh, that it, it's alive in contrast to dead water that's been sitting in pipes metal pipes that are rusting and all sorts of things that we get from our municipal, right? From our taps. So anyway, take a look. It's really, really incredible. Good, good, good. I love structured water. Thank you, Dawn, for putting that right there. Beautiful blog, the best water for home use. Check it out for sure. Okay. Uh, let's keep going here. I'm looking to see if there's anything else. Vicki, if you get a chance, can you put in how much, can you please clarify if the vitamin C capsules are ascorbic acid, number one, and how many of them per bath, and then how much bentonite, bentonite clay. If you could put that in here, it would be grand. We'd really appreciate it. Can you put alkaline water in the home system? I would not put alkaline water in the home system, everyone. Remember, your skin is acidic. You start bathing in alkaline water all the time and you're gonna wreck things. You're gonna wreck that balance. So do not, please do not do that. Sure, Kathy. Okay, thanks Vicki, I appreciate it. No problem, we'll figure it out. Okay, Kathy says, can you please repeat how we can join the liver program? Yes, I am going to, um, if you send me your email, PM me, right, on Messenger. Just send me your email. I will say liver link, please, and I'll send you a link and you can join. That's the easiest way to do it, I think. Okay, let's go ahead and look and see if what else. People had other questions about bathing. Really important subject, folks. Get yourself, look at that water. Okay, look at the water. Look at the water in your house. Look at the water you're drinking. I'm going to drink some structured water right now. Thank you. You know what happens when you drink structured water? You need less supplements. You need less minerals. Your body is so efficient at the cellular level. This is like critical, folks. I know, going a little crazy on this, but structured water is very, very important. Okay, and I'm learning more and more about it. And again, Dr. Natasha, I don't know. It's not in gaps anywhere, but it will make everything you do in gaps better. Okay for your body. Alejandra wants to know which bath is best for hair dandruff. 
Ooh, okay. Hmm. All right, good question. Ready? Okay. Dandruff means you have an imbalance of yeast. So let's go backwards and think about cradle cap. Everyone remembers cradle cap or is aware of cradle cap? Boy, I'm turning colors over here. I better get closer. Cradle cap is something sometimes babies get that it's all crusty on their, right? It's all crusty on their head. That is a sure sign of a yeast imbalance for your child. So if you have dandruff, you need to really take out those sugars, right? Work the kefir a lot, okay? Um, meaning drink a lot of kefir, milk kefir, because that really helps to counter the yeast that's causing the dandruff, okay? Things that you can do for dandruff. Besides drink a lot of kefir or kefir, you could, I know, sounds crazy, you could do a kefir massage in your head, right? Before you go to bed, get some kefir, milk kefir, massage it into your head, put on a towel, put a towel on your pillow so nothing gets dirty, go to bed, get up the next day, wash your hair. You could also do it when you're going to be home for a couple of hours. Really wonderful to do that. You could also do, uh, this is topical, of course, you could also do uh, olive oil, do a bunch of olive oil, again, before you go to bed or when you're going to be home for a while, you know, and you just wrap your head in a towel and the heat will help. You can put olive oil, massage extra virgin olive oil into your scalp. Wonderful thing to do. As the yeast comes into balance in your body, with the other microbes, your dandruff will go away. I have seen people lose all of their hair because of the amount of yeast that they had. Literally, you would comb and their hair would just come out and pull off all the cradle cap. It's really very frightening. It's very disturbing to people, anxiety producing, but please work your key for everybody if you have dandruff it will help uh what would be best for you probably um dr natasha says if you're going to wash your hair do an apple cider vinegar bath and then wash your hair in the bathtub um but i would work the dandruff the from the other direction if you understand what i'm saying alejandra <sighs> Wouldn't it be dangerous to add acids like vitamin C for chlorine? Wouldn't the acid react with the bleach base and form other poisonous gases? So just one more time with feeling, Anna, when I talk about vitamin C, I am not talking about acid. Just so everyone is really clear, vitamin C is not ascorbic acid, even though the FDA tells you it is. Ascorbic acid is just the antioxidant wrapper of the vitamin C complex. So, okay, Jenny. Hey, Jenny, good to have you. You're welcome. Good to have you, Jenny. So, yeah. Um, Anna, again, this is not something that I have done myself to take chlorine out. This is, I know that Dr. Becky Plotner talks about it and I trust her implicitly. She's an amazing practitioner and naturopathic doctor and GAPS practitioner and I haven't looked into it myself. I haven't done it myself. So I would just check that out. If you don't want to go that way, go ahead and get a bath ball and just take the chlorine out. Filtered. Filter it out. Mara says, I have been using coconut oil for my scalp. Excellent. Coconut oil, again, antimicrobial, antifungal. Yes, but what I'm, what I'm suggesting is you know, a spa night, right? Where one night a week or one day on the weekend, you give your scalp some good attention and you massage it in and then you put, you know, wrap your towel around like a turban and let that heat from your head and the oil really work on your scalp and then wash it out. Remembering that we wash our hair with egg yolks on gaps. Everybody got that? Egg yolks. Not too hot water, you'll have scrambled eggs on your head. Okay, Dawn says, I thought apple cider vinegar was good for scalp too. You can try it, absolutely. Okay, Dr. Becky, Vicky says, it was Dr. Becky's lecture 
for the certified gaps coach training one tablet of vitamin c one t oh, one teaspoon i'm sorry vitamin c one teaspoon betonite clay for city water absorbs chlorine she didn't specify ascorbic acid i use vitamin c fat soluble liposomal golly that's really expensive vitamin c vicky um the fat soluble liposomal um Let's check with her. I'm going to shoot her a note, and we'll let everybody know what type of vitamin C. Is it ascorbic acid? I'm going to bet it's ascorbic acid. I don't know. I don't know. Question mark. Okay. Thank you for looking that up. Very, very, very much appreciated. Hello, Glenda. Is the structured water, Kathy wants to know, is the structured water what Paralandra is creating? Hmm. Give me more, Kathy, so I understand. Okay, Lee Henderson says one quarter teaspoon uh, pour 100 gallons. That's a lot of water of ascorbic acid. All right, Lee, let me know where you found that. Okay. All right, what is happening during... All right, let's get back to some questions about raw milk that happened up here, I think. Hello, Phelan. All right. I said hello to everyone else. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. All right, here we go. Okay, I see Dawn. I'm looking and going way far up. Okay, we're going to go way far up to a raw milk question. La, 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 way up here. All right, Caroline, is it okay to freeze raw milk and then use it for yogurt and kefir? Will it retain the same benefits? Yes. In fact, if you have a hard time getting to your raw milk, you can only get it for certain times, yeah. Go ahead and freeze it, and then go ahead and use it to make yogurt and kefir. Good idea. Love that. Megan says, I've frozen mine and then make kefir. Yes. The freezing will, uh, it won't really change it so much. Um, the only thing freezing is really going to do is kill some of the uh, live bacteria. But freezing is a good thing to do if that's what you need to do to get your raw milk. Really good idea. All right. Maria says, hi, Monica. What can I do if I gain too much weight on gaps? My clothes don't fit anymore and I can't buy new. I eat no plants, so it can't be carbs. Too much fat, egg yolks, about 10 a day and dairy must do something different to stop this. Thanks. Maria, I'm sorry to hear that you're gaining weight on gaps. What Dr. Natasha would say is that trust the body. I know that doesn't feel good to you, but um, trust the body and know that at some point you will level out. You will level out, meaning you will drop that weight. Um, if, you're, if you think you're having too much fat, then you can back it up, have more stock. Remember, maybe what someone would like to do, I don't know your, again, I do not know your personal uh, history. I do not know your symptoms. I don't know any of those things, but if I were just taking a shot at it as a CGP, I would say something like, how about a GAPS liquid fast one day of the week or two days of the week? Remember, GAPS liquid fasting, this should not be done for people with adrenal fatigue or adrenal stress or people that are exhausted or people that are very, very sick. Remember, fasting is not done in those conditions. Uh, or under those conditions. So there is GAPS liquid fasting in this book. Perhaps you'd like to try that for one day. See how you feel on it. And then you could do a day, a week, or two days a week of liquid fasting. And uh, that may be enough. Uh, I also don't know your age. So this could be menopausal or premenopausal, pre etc. Uh, you could also move, perhaps, from milk kefir to water kefir. That may be an option, too. So, remember also that too much fat does not make a fat person. Too much fat, fat gives your body the cholesterol and the building blocks it needs for every cell wall in your body, for your brain, for your kidneys, for your lungs, for your uh, adrenal hormones, your stress hormones, your sex hormones, all of your steroidal hormones, etc. You need fat for all of those things. Could she cut back on protein as well? 
Again, I do not know. You don't want to cut it back on protein, folks. Um, but I don't know her case, so I would have to get much more, um, many more details in order to really, uh, you know, hone in on your specific issues. Those are just some ideas. Okay. All right, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Okay. Anna wants to know what is happening during detox reactions. If it helps with detox, what is going on that you react to? Hmm. I'm not sure what your second question is. Maybe you can give me more about that. What is happening during detox reactions? Um, golly, that's really complicated. What's, uh, are you talking about die off reactions? Do you want to know about die off or detox? Let me know down there and I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Okay. All right. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Crystal Cox wants to know, do you have any recommendations for shampoos and condition that conditioner that are not toxic. So really guys and gals, in both of these books, Dr. Natasha talks a lot about body care products and says that shampoo, we should not put anything on the body or in the in the body. We shouldn't put pardon me, I said it wrong. You shouldn't put anything in the body. No, wrong. One more time. You shouldn't put anything on the body that you wouldn't put in the body. So whatever's going on your hair to cleanse clean your hair should be food grade. So one more time with feeling, that means egg yolks are the way that we clean our hair on gaps. Um, and other than that, you know, uh, I know we talked about running those two things uh, alongside each other. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with my lighting here. Um, Nutrition and detoxification need to be running alongside each other. Maybe I should move over here. Moving over here? Nope. Moving over here? Nope. Moving closer? That's better. All right. Okay. Um, okay. So um, you really want to look at getting your house green, not using paint, right? No new rugs, no painting, no new rugs, no um, plastic in your home. I mean, there's all sorts of things that would be really, really important to do for people on the GAPS diet. And so if you want to look into shampoos and conditioners that are not toxic, uh, you know, shampoo, egg yolks, conditioner, rosemary oil used sparingly, or you can look at the environmental working group, EWG, and, and look at their, um, they have a healthy living uh, app that scores things in terms of toxicity. So you can always look there also. Okay, Dawn learned about the vitamin C tablets from the late Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez. Yes, he was a real pioneer. Megan wants to know, the yeast connection to hair loss, dandruff, and cradle cap struggled with my entire life. As the yeast dies off, does one lose more hair? I'm experiencing more hair loss lately. You can. Remember that the hair follicle, um, you can lose hair as your, as all of you comes back to balance. And yeah, you can for sure. All right. Oh, <sighs> No, Kathy, the respiratory product uh, is, yes. So the Paralandra respiratory product is specific to the microbes in the respiratory system. But I do not believe they're doing anything with structured water. The only one that they might be working with is their cell, uh, what they call their cell formula, may be doing some of that. Okay, Caroline wants to know, if you make... Ice cream for kefir cream and creme fraiche. Will the probiotics survive? Yes, some of them will. Some of them will. But the other thing is, folks, remember, when you make ice cream with kefir cream and creme fraiche, why are you doing that? You're doing that because you have pre-digested all the lactose, number one, and you've added enzymes and all sorts of other good things. So they may survive, they may not survive, I don't actually know, but that is the best way to make ice cream on the GAPS diet. Please make sure you're not eating any of it close to a meal 
because cold shuts digestion cold, shuts it down. Okay, Don't, uh, doesn't the use of vegetable medley give the probiotics of kefir instead of milk kefir, which would help one? That's a great idea too. Yes, so Dawn uh, is giving this uh, to Maria, a good idea. You can use vegetable medley instead of milk kefir also. Great idea. You keep your probiotics, but I think she's doing no plant gaps, but she could use the juice. Yes, using the juice of vegetable medley would give you the same probiotics. Really good. Yep, and kombucha. Excellent. Hello, Sharice. Good to have you. I mean, the side effects from too hot a bath. Okay, so you're just, so I, I don't know. I, I'm going to try and explain this. So when you have, again, in the beginning, for anyone who came in late, I went over the five detoxification baths that Dr. Natasha talks about in the blue book. She goes over four in the yellow book. And she talks about starting slowly. You can... You can manage the detoxification. Here's the thing, really, Anna, is that I think, I think I'm getting this. I think I get your question, which is you don't want to detoxify too fast because you'll feel miserable, right? We don't want to do it too much because you'll feel bad. Always, when I work with people, I want you to manage the die-off and manage the detox. We want to manage it so that you don't feel like crud, so that you don't feel horrible. Gaps is hard enough without feeling really bad. So we want to make sure that you're not over detoxing. You're not letting too many toxins out too fast, which would wreck the equilibrium of the body and cause, um, what do they call it? It's just detoxification sickness, kind of. I mean, don't take that too strongly, but you're not going to feel good. So please work with the amount of detoxification agent that you're putting in your bath work with the temperature of the water, and work with the amount of time that's perfect for your body. And then move it up a little more and increase it a little more and increase it a little more so that you continue to detox. I hope that was helpful. Okay. Anna uses baking soda for greasy hair. Great. Remember that greasy hair, dry hair, greasy scalp, Dry scalp are all connected to what's going on in your gut. So heal and seal with meat stock. Cut out all the sugar and let's keep on healing. Okay. Teresa wants to know, is it okay to give a newborn vitamin D drops? No. Sorry. Everyone, I know that came out too strong. Please stay away from vitamin D that is isolated from A, K, and E. So cod liver oil is a very good idea. Sauerkraut drops are a really good idea. Teresa, yes, excellent. But do not give vitamin D. Uh, that's not part of the food that is cod liver oil. Anyone, whether you're an adult, you're a child, you're a newborn, you're an infant, doesn't matter. No D in isolation, please. It'll just set you up for a lot of other problems including calcium problems and, and uh, cholesterol issues, all sorts of problems. Just a really bad idea. But great idea, cod liver oil. Depends on how old you're, oh, newborn. I would wait at least, here's what I would do. Let's jump into Yellow Book. Yellow Book, part four, having a new baby in the GAPS family. Let's see what Dr. Natasha talks about. New baby. New baby. I'm looking really fast because I know we're over. New baby. La, 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 la. Apart from feeding. Good food, fresh air, loving attention, daily walks, and good sleep. She does not even have cod liver oil in here or any other supplements for new baby. Um, I put together a chart for First Foods for Baby. It's actually based on Weston A. Price. You can find it on my website. The question, I think we start, where do we start cod liver oil? I don't think we start cod liver oil before three months. But I can also post that CLO on the page. 
three months question mark but my chart is also on my web website simply being well if you want to try it certainly you could do sauerkraut chops if you want to i would not do any let's not do cod liver oil at least for three months is there still healing without detox baths due to not to not having a bathtub again lena yes there's still healing what we need to do is detoxify so use other measures do a foot bath every night you can do a foot bath every night if you can't do a bath every night and then use other things right what are those other things go for walks in nature if it's not snowing where you are or even if it is um, get to the ocean if you can get to mineral hot springs if you can um, do saunas if you can uh, all sorts of good detoxification support the detoxification uh, castor oil packs on the liver if you can all sorts of things thanks Dawn remember that is a uh, that is not a gaps chart it is a Weston a price nourishing traditions chart uh, but Sally does not introduce grains before two years anyway, so everything could be used. Okay, we're over time. Thank you, everyone, for coming and being with me today. I've really enjoyed your questions. I hope I was helpful. I wish you well on your path. Uh, please do continue to tag me on posts. Um, tag me on posts on the page so I find them. I didn't find one for three days the other day, even though I'm scrolling on there. So tag me with an at sign, at Monica Corrado. All right, everyone, we will see you next Tuesday. Same gaps time, same gaps station, right? Facebook Live. You're very welcome, everyone. And I'm so glad you're welcome, Dawn and Barbara and Lena and Carol and Caroline and Kathy and Crystal and Phelan. Anna, you're welcome. Please put your questions on the page. Thank you so much, Lena. You too. And, um, ha, good. Hello, you're welcome. Sierra Nan, of course. Please put your questions on the page. Let me know if you want to be in Love Your Liver with a PM. You're welcome, Teresa. And, um, let me know. Bye, Mara. Love to everyone back home. Um, let me know uh, if there's a certain subject you'd like me to go over. I mean, this subject is because uh, Alejandra asked, what about the baths? So you let me know what you want to talk about, and I will try to cover them um, as I can. Okay. Be well, everyone. Take good care of yourselves. Take an Epsom salt bath tonight so that you're not stressed out. And make sure you have lots of good fat, Russian custard, and some meat stock. All right. Bye, everyone. Be well. Thanks for joining me.